I want to talk um, today about an uh, expression that came from Mrs. Thatcher, uh, and that and is a very simple one. The facts of life are conservative. The facts of life are conservative, and you can try and buck those facts of life, but reality will have a way of asserting itself. Um, the, the, the first fact, I think, deals with what's going on in our neighbor to the, to the south. Ross Dow that uh, many of you heard today, and he was asked why Republicans don't get together uh, and connect more with Canadian conservatives and Australian conservatives and conservative parties around the rest of the English-speaking world. There's very few, very few connections, very few connections there. And he basically, I'm paraphrasing his answer, but he basically said, well, we, guy, we, we, don't, we don't think you guys are the real deal. We think you're like wussy conservative light and uh, the Republican Party is the real thing. And, and I've heard that a lot in the United States. Um, I had a disagreement with Professor Paul Ray of Hillsdale College at the time Obama was, uh, was ramming through Obamacare and the stimulus and all the rest of it. Uh, and I said that as a Canadian, this looked very familiar to me, a lot of what he was doing. And uh, Professor Ray said to me, well, you don't, you don't get it. You don't get it. Americans are not Canadians. We are not going to go willingly uh, into that dark status night uh, the way Canadians have been willing to do. Now, at that point, at that point, total government spending, just to go back to that video we were looking at, uh, total government spending in the United States was 42% of GDP. Uh, and in Canada, at that time, it was 43% of GDP. So that tiny little a sliver of 1% is the difference between Ross Dow, that's a sturdy, self-reliant republic of manly small government types, and an effete, panty-waist, deadbeat, pansified, semi-French monarchical basket case. <laughs> that little 1%. A year ago, when, when Professor Paul Ray and I had that argument, the percentages were actually this. Uh, Canada, 42-something percent, we've gone down, and the United States, 45-something percent. So sometimes, sometimes a country's mythology uh, outlives the reality. And I would humbly suggest to Ross and friends in the Republican Party that their mythology has outlived the reality of what has actually happened in the United States. If you take America's... If you take America's total indebtedness, federal, state, the lot, it averages out to three quarters of a million dollars per family. Uh, the United States is on course to become the first nation of negative millionaires. Uh, but if you just stick with the official federal debt, the figure for which Washington is officially responsible, in Australia each citizen's share of the debt is $12,000, in New Zealand it's $15,000 per person, in Canada $18,000, in the United Kingdom, $28,000, and in the United States, it's $54,000 per person. Twice as much as Britain, thrice as much as Canada, uh, closing in on five times as much as Australia. And on that trajectory, uh, America is exiting the first world. Uh, we've just had the federal budget in Ottawa. La last year, the deficit, I believe I'm right in saying, was $6 billion. Uh, and this year there will supposedly be a surplus of 18 billion. Those are rounding errors in a Washington budget. The US government spends six billion dollars it doesn't have every 32 hours. Uh, what, would, what would that 18 billion dollar surplus uh, that Canada has this year, what would that buy you in Washington? It would buy you one half of one nothing little federal program. The Obama administration's $38.6 billion clean technology program was supposed to create or save 65,000 jobs. 
Half the money has been spent, that's 17.2 billion, and they have 3,545 jobs to show for it, which works out to an impressive $4,851,904.09 per green job they've, uh, they've created. That's, that's the difference in scale between what is happening down south and what is happening uh, up here. By the way, I love what people complain about here. It's, I, I opened the National Post this morning and saw that Alison Redford uh, is in trouble for spending $9,200 to fly herself, her daughter, and two staffers back from Palm Springs for Ralph Klein's funeral. That's 9,200, that's 4,008, that's 2,400 per person. For $9,200, you can't take Obama to the men's room at the Starbucks across from the White House. You can't take him there for 92,000. It, 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 costs, it costs seven million dollars to fly the Obamas to Hawaii for a week's Christmas vacation. And I love the way, and, and people should never stop, I love it, a world where people complain about nine thousand dollars of political expenditures. Uh, you, when Prince, uh, Prince William and his lovely bride were here, uh, a, uh, a year or two ago, and they flew him to Los Angeles in that uh, RCAF bone shaker that they call the VIP transport. Uh, and, her, and her Royal Highness emerged looking radiant, as she always does, but it was probably because the RCAF had decided to splash out on new bedding for the Royal Tour. Master Corporal Amanda Heron was dispatched to the local mall in Trenton and returned with a pale blue and white comforter and matching pillows. Uh, is there no end to the, like, grotesque indulgence of these pampered royal deadbeats? I found a beautiful set, said Master Corporal Herod. It was such a great price, I bought one for myself. Don't, don't, don't ever lose, don't ever lose that.